Hello everyone. In the last class we discussed about a class of antimicrobial drugs called antibiotics. Now antibiotics were chemicals which kill or inhibit the growth of microorganisms selectively without harming human cells or tissues. And because of this property of antibiotics they were safe to ingest and can be given orally to patients. However today we are going to discuss a different class of antimicrobial drugs namely antiseptics. Antiseptics too just like antibiotics kill or inhibit the growth of microorganisms however they are not very selective in that process simply meaning that in the process of harming microorganisms they also harm human cells or human tissues therefore they are not very safe to ingest and cannot be given orally to patients so basically antiseptics are chemicals which can kill or inhibit the growth of microorganisms when applied externally on wounds cuts ulcers and diseased skin surfaces and because they are toxic to human beings they cannot be given orally to patients examples of such antiseptics are furacin and soframycin now do you remember the last time when you went out for playing and got wounded in the process what was the first thing that was done your wound was cleaned with an antiseptic liquid called detol I even remember the burning sensation which Detol produces when it is applied on a wound. Do you know what is this Detol? Actually, this Detol is a mixture of two chemicals namely chloroxylenol and terpeniol. So next time when you see a bottle of Detol, kindly check for these ingredients. Not only this, even antiseptic chemicals like bithyanol are added in soaps in order to kill germs present on your skin surface when you take a bath. even iodine is a powerful antiseptic therefore its 2 to 3% solution in an alcohol water mixture is used as an antiseptic to be applied on wounds it is so important that it has been given a special name which is tincture of iodine now i would like to remind you about a basic organic chemistry reaction where iodine and sodium hydroxide are added into methyl ketone or secondary alcohol having methyl group in the alpha position This leads to the formation of a yellow precipitate called triiodomethane or iodoform. You will be astonished to know that this iodoform or triiodomethane have antiseptic properties. Do you know how this happens? Actually, at the site of wound, we have an enzyme called catalase. This enzyme catalase acts on iodomethane to release iodine slowly at the site of the wound. So here too, iodine actually acts as the antiseptic quite indirectly in the form of iodoform. even for sensitive areas like our eyes we have an antiseptic like a dilute aqueous solution of boric acid now i'd like to tell you that this dilution of boric acid is quite important because this dilution decreases the activity of boric acid so that it does no harm to our eyes now let's move on to the next class of antimicrobial drugs namely disinfectants now disinfectants too like antibiotics and antiseptics are chemicals which kill or inhibit the growth of microorganisms however these disinfectants can only be applied on non living inanimate objects like drainage systems floors instruments or any other non living object now let me differentiate disinfectants from antiseptics with the help of an example now suppose a doctor has to carry out a surgical operation so the doctor will put antiseptic on the site of the wound on the patient's body to kill microorganisms However, he will sterilize the operation table with the help of a disinfectant. In simpler terms, both disinfectants and antiseptics are applied on surfaces. Difference being, antiseptics are applied on the surface of a living tissue, however, disinfectants are applied on the surface of non-living objects. Now, if you notice the bottle of floor cleaner which is used to clean floors in your house, you will definitely find the word disinfectant written on it. and this is because it is used to kill microorganisms on the surface of a non living floor now here i want to highlight an important point and that is the same chemical which acts as an antiseptic in lower concentrations becomes a disinfectant in higher concentrations for example a 0.2% solution of phenol acts as an antiseptic however if you want to increase this percentage to 1% this 1% solution of phenol now acts as a disinfectant other examples of disinfectants are a solution of chlorine in 0.2 to 0.4 parts per million concentrations 
and sulfur dioxide in low concentrations also acts as a disinfectant. Now this marks the end of our discussion about different types of antimicrobial drugs. Next we move forward towards another class of drugs namely anti-fertility drugs. Now in order to understand these drugs we need to know that what was the requirement to make these anti-fertility drugs. Well let me explain it to you in detail. Due to advancements in healthcare and the discovery of various drugs capable of fighting against diseases, nowadays human beings enjoy long and healthy lives. This has led to population explosion with India being the second most populated country just after China. This increasing population actually leads to various kinds of problems. Now let me explain it to you with the help of an example. Suppose you have two oranges and one of your friends comes to your house to visit you. You can share one orange with your friend and both you and your friend can enjoy one complete orange. However, if two more of your friends come to your house, a problem arises. Can you guess what is the problem? Now we have two oranges which have to be shared among four people. And because of this, none of you will get one complete orange. Now problems arising out of increasing population are quite similar to this example. Here too on earth, just like those two oranges, we have limited resources of food and water. And these limited resources have to be shared among large number of people. This leads to various problems like depleting food and water, unemployment, environmental damage and many other problems. Now to counter all these problems, we need to address the root cause of these problems. And that is increasing population. Here too chemistry comes to our rescue in the form of anti-fertility drugs. These anti-fertility drugs are basically chemicals which suppress the action of hormones which promote fertility or pregnancy in women. Basically these anti-fertility drugs reduce the chances of pregnancy and act as a protective measure. Now basically there are two hormones which regulate pregnancy in females. Namely progesterone and estrogen. Progesterone causes the mucus which is present in cervix to thicken up and because cervix is the lower part of the uterus from where the sperm enters into the uterus, this prevents the entry of the sperm and hence prevents the sperm from fertilizing the egg. Not only this, progesterone also suppresses ovulation in females decreasing the chances of pregnancy. Now birth control pills mainly consist of a mixture of synthetic derivatives of progesterone and estrogen. This is because these synthetic derivatives are much more potent and effective than natural progesterone and estrogen. One of the examples of synthetic progesterone derivatives is norethindrone. This norethindrone acts as an anti-fertility drug. Not only this, another example of synthetic derivative of estrogen is ethanyl estradiol. This ethanyl estradiol is used in combination with synthetic derivatives of progesterone in birth control pills. Now this marks the end of our discussion about therapeutic effects of different classes of drugs. And I hope by the end of it you people are better able to appreciate the contributions made by chemistry in the field of medicine. Now before we move on to our next topic, let's do a quick recap of what we have learned today. Antiseptics. These are chemicals which kill or prevent the growth of microorganisms. However, antiseptics are applied externally on wounds, cuts, ulcers and diseased skin surfaces. These are not ingested like antibiotics. For example, antiseptic creams like furacin, soframycin, tincture of iodine, iodoform and boric acid in dilute concentration act as antiseptics. Disinfectants. These are also chemicals which either kill or prevent the growth of microorganisms just like antiseptics and antibiotics. However, disinfectants are only applied to non-living inanimate objects such as flows, drainage systems, instruments, etc. For example, aqueous solution of chlorine in 0.2 to 0.4 parts per million concentration, sulfur dioxide in very low concentrations and 1% solution of phenol are used as disinfectants. Anti-fertility drugs. These are basically chemicals that help in suppressing the action of hormones which promote fertility or pregnancy in women. These drugs actually reduce the chances of pregnancy and act as protection. Northindrone, a synthetic progesterone derivative, and ethanyl estradiol, an estrogen derivative, are used in birth control pills as anti-fertility drugs.